Flowers hold on to You can give them to your bridesmaid if you like. Or to your dad. <laughs> Welcome everyone. If you'd like to gather in Sorry. nice and close, as close as you <laughs> possibly can, please feel free to fill up the middle section there. Thank you. How's my hair and my tire? Hi. How's my hair and my tire? I was gonna get your dad to do the tire, but I remember you got to see last minute. <laughs> Sorry, on behalf of Crystal and Wayne, I'd like to welcome you here today to celebrate with them as they pledge their commitment to one another in marriage. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for being here and for showing them your support today. When thinking, people conclude what are the real values in life and come to decide what it is that really matters and that's human relationships. One of the most understated but deepest relationships in human life is that between caring father and the loving daughter. So one of the rare occasions when this relationship is acknowledged is at a wedding ceremony. Raoul represents all of us. He particularly represents his family, but today in a special gesture, he symbolises his own personal love for his daughter. So mindfully of these values, I now ask him and Crystal's mum, who brings, thank you, who brings this woman to be married to this man? We do. We do. You can give her a kiss and join the other guests. Thank you. Bye. See you. Where's my kiss? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to hold hands? I'm going to come to the side of you. Sure. Throughout history, there have been great love stories, like this one. There are tales of men and women who have been through great suffering, terrible conflicts, and who have overcome seemingly insurmountable barriers to be with one another. Every love story, in its own way, has that certain greatness. There is often the untold story of the physical and mental hardships, the fear and agony of difficult decisions, the shattering darkness at the great breaks in life's patterns, and then, almost unbelievably, that light at the end of the tunnel. True love, tradition tells us, and days like this, never runs smooth. But there does come a time when the forces which have sought to destroy, admit defeat and disintegrate, and love triumphs. And this is a happy occasion when Crystal and Wayne stand before us to celebrate and declare their love and today their marriage. Their path, like many, has not been easy. And perhaps because of this, they value that commitment and their happiness and indeed this wedding today, much more than had it been otherwise. They know that they can never take their relationship for granted. And they found in each other that special and unique yet mysterious quality whereby they are meant for each other. So I'd now like to invite a special person to come forward and give us a reading, someone that's very uh, special to Crystal, um, Tay. I'm, I'm going to introduce myself to you. Most of you don't know me. My name is Tay, I'm a Buddhist monk, and um, I'm, um, what can I say, I'm, I'm the resident monk in a meditation group, which uh, Crystal has been attending really regularly for probably two years or more. Yeah. And earlier this year, she made another commitment, well, a very beautiful commitment, to live her life according to Buddhist principles, and today she's making another commitment. So that's two commitments in one year. Well done. <laughs> Over here you've got in big white letters a word love. And I'm going to read you what the Buddha said about love. And then I'll just say a couple of things very quickly to tie that in with a wedding. This is what the Buddha says about love. Can you hear me? Good. <laughs> he or she who wants to attain peace should practice being upright, humble and capable of using loving speech. He or she will know how to live simply and happily, with senses calmed, without being covetous and carried away by the emotions of the majority. Let him or her not do anything that will be disapproved of 
by the wise ones. And this is what he or she contemplates. May everyone be happy and safe, and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born, may all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Just as a mother loves and protects her only child at the risk of her own life, we should cultivate boundless love to offer to all living beings in the entire cosmos. We should let our boundless love pervade the whole universe, above, below and across. Our love will know no obstacles. Our heart will be absolutely free from hatred and enmity. Whether standing or walking, sitting or lying, as long as we are awake, we should maintain this mindfulness of love in our own heart. This is the noblest way of living. Free from wrong views, greed and sensual desires, living in beauty and realising perfect understanding, those who practise boundless love who will certainly transcend birth and death. And I just want to was watching them, the two of you while I was standing there, and I saw Crystal fiddling, <laughs> fiddling with Wayne's shirt and all of that sort of stuff. And at this time in their life, they have only eyes for one another. But we've talked about this next thing, and that is that one day little ones will come along. So their gaze will have to necessarily turn away from each other to the little ones who have come. And then, and Crystal's already been doing this, and I think Wayne has too in her work life, her, she's had eyes for others who are suffering in the world. So the love that they generate together to d now and for the, in the next coming years will eventually be a love that will spread outward to their children and to the world around them. And so I want to offer a blessing on behalf of our Sangha to you. May you both be happy together for all your days. May your love result in a beautiful family. And may that same love be shown outward toward the world. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Time to follow that. As a civil celebrant and justice of the peace, I, Susan Galena, duly authorised to solemnise your marriage according to the laws of the Commonwealth of Australia. Before you, Wayne, and you, Crystal, join together in my presence, the presence of all of these witnesses, who are also your family and friends, bound to remind you of the solemn and binding nature, the relationship into which you're about to enter. Marriage is a voluntary union of two people to the exclusion of all others entered into for life. So I'm going to ask you to please now affirm to one another. If you'd like to come around and hold hands. Yep, just if you could stand. Yep, hold hands. <laughs> Perfect. Wayne, will you take Crystal to be your lawful wedded wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and keep her? In sickness and in health and forsaking all others, keep only unto her so long as you both shall live. I will. And Crystal, will you take Wayne to be your lawful wedded <laughs> husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and keep him? In sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep only unto him so long as you both shall live. I will. <laughs> I'll ask you to please now exchange your vows, initially repeating after me. We'll start with you, Wayne. I ask all present. <coughs> I ask all present. To witness that I. To witness that I. Wayne Dale Blackburn. Wayne Dale Blackburn. Take you. Take you. Crystal Renee Dunk. Crystal Renee Dunk. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. Please now read the vows that you've written, nice and loud, so everyone can hear you. Crystal, I, I promise to be your lover, companion and friend, your partner in parenthood, your ally in conflict, your comrade in adventure, your student and your teacher, your consolation in disappointment, your accomplice in mischief. <laughs> this is my vow to you. And most importantly, I also vow to learn to love regular tap water instead of the expensive <laughs> bottle kind. <laughs> that I can never seem to find the lids for. <laughs>
I ask all present to witness that I, to witness that I, Crystal Renee Dunk, Crystal Renee Dunk, take you, take you, Wayne Dale Blackburn, Wayne Dale Blackburn, to be my lawfully wedded husband, to be my lawfully wedded husband. <laughs> Read the vows if you can, but you've written nice and loud if you can. Oh, well, that's not bad. Oh, there's a second page. Sorry. Oh, there's a second page. <laughs> <laughs> and it's small so print. Don't ever say she's in the middle of the kingdom. <laughs> Sorry, mine is a bit longer. <laughs> um, Wayne. From the moment our paths crossed in 2008, you've captivated me, challenged me, frustrated me, <laughs> and then loved me in ways no one has ever before. Just the other night, we went to watch a movie outside on the projector, Deadpool. We pushed two deck chairs up together and sat down to relax. As our fingers and arms brushed up against each other, you looked over at me with that handsome smile and said it reminded you of a time we went to the cinema as friends. You then recalled that when my arm touched yours on the armrest that night that you didn't care for popcorn anymore as you were too scared to move for the entire movie in case I moved my arm away. <laughs> Wayne, I've wanted to hold your hand during every movie we've ever watched and I promise to always hold your hand throughout our lives. I will love you in the good times and bad, when life seems easy and when it seems hard and when our love is simple, and when it's an effort. I promise to always try again, regardless the time, distance, space, or miscommunication, I will always choose you. I promise to try to love you better every day and put your needs before my own, although please give me time for reflection. Wayne, I will never abandon you. I promise to support and love you as an individual as we continue to grow together and grow old together. I promise to be loyal and faithful and to put you before all else. I will notice, I will notice the gifts you give me and appreciate them. Your kisses, your kindness, your patience, your humour, your effort. I promise to take care of myself and let you help take care of me. I, pro I promise to encourage you to take care of yourself and help in any way I can. I will encourage and inspire you and laugh a lot with you and comfort you in times of sorrow and struggle. I promise to never stop making up songs for our dogs. Almost there. Wayne, I vowed to be vulnerable and communicate my feelings to you. I promise to be there to assist and carry you when you need it, whether that be in sickness, health or conversation. I will get you outside to interact when you need it and Netflix and chill when you don't. I will take you on many adventures as I develop never-ending new hobbies. And I, <laughs> and I know you will support me and show interest, but also be there to pull me in, ground me, and help me reflect. Wayne, I have fallen in love with you over and over again for 10 years. <laughs> no matter how hard I tried, just one touch or smile and I was right back there. There is an old saying which goes, if you love something, set it three. If it comes back, it's yours. If not, it was never meant to be. What is behind this saying? Some interpret it as a description of fate. Only fate can determine whether a relationship was meant to be. So if you let someone go, they will come back if that's your destiny. Wayne, you are my destiny and I am yours. Today I give you my heart and I promise to hold yours forever. You are my sunshine, you are my moon, and you are all the stars in the sky. Wayne, I am mad about you. 
I always have been, and I can't imagine a life where I'm not. Even after all these years, that feeling is still the same. I love you, handsome. Let's get married. <laughs> we got this. Yeah. <laughs> Jackson. Good, Good boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we take it out? Perfect. I'll give that to you. Thank you. And you take it out. Thank you. Crystal, with this ring. Crystal, with this ring. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. Of love and trust. Of love and trust. It will symbolise. It will symbolise. Our eternal love. Our eternal love. And marriage. And marriage. To one another. To one another. And the world will know. And the world will know. That I am yours. That I am yours. And you are mine. And you are mine. Wayne's left hand in yours and repeat after me. Wayne, with this ring. Wayne, with this ring. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. Of love and trust. Of love and trust. It will symbolise. It will symbolise. Our eternal love. Our eternal love. And marriage. And marriage. To one another. To one another. And the world will know. And the world will know. That I am yours. That I am yours. And you are mine. And you are mine. Wayne and Crystal, you've declared before all of us that you will live together in marriage. To be true and real, this ceremony should be something more than just a legal recognition of your marriage. Regard it also as a symbol of your love, the consecration of each of you to the other and of both to the noblest ends of life. And so, on behalf of all of your families and friends, and I have much pleasure in declaring you to be husband and wife, and Wayne, you may kiss your bride.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dave and Elizabeth. And we have a huge round of applause, please, for our married couple this evening, Mr. and Mrs. Wayne and Crystal Blackburn. Thank you, everyone. I'm I'm Ralph, Crystal's father, the poor girl. <laughs> She's, isn't she looking absolutely gorgeous today? Eh? Absolutely beautiful. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, Is that all right? Yeah. Well, we we're lucky with the weather too, because we're we're awfully, you know, it could have been raining, could have been pouring down, but it's not. Do you know when uh, when your mother and I were married? Uh, it was pouring on the day we were married. Absolutely pouring. I woke up and, you know, it's urinating down, and. <laughs> But uh, we had our wedding, the wedding room, we came out and it fined up, so it was very nice. That was actually, thir I worked it out today, but it was 33 years, three months and six Ooh. days ago. Oh. Yeah. Normally I say not even Von Einem got that, but I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, here's, here's a short quote I found from uh, comedian Rita Rudner. I love being married. It's so great to find that special person you want to annoy the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, welcome, welcome to everyone for coming here today, uh, especially those who travelled a long way away. Uh, I know the ones I know of was my brother and sister-in-law, Craig and Michelle. They came down from Cairns. Is, is it freezing cold down here, guys? Or? <laughs> And to Wayne's, Wayne's dad, uh, Michael, who's from Sydney. Hey, Wayne. Is there anyone else who's travelled a long way? Yes, we did. Yeah, West Lakes. Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, well, look, I'll talk a little bit about Crystal now. As you can see, I'm taking, I, I'm showing little cheat notes here. Look, I was there when you were born, Crystal. And I, and I remember how nervous I was when you brought you home from the hospital in the baby capsule. It was terrifying. Uh, but, and Crystal was the same growing up as she is now. 
which, which I mean intelligent, bubbly, sensitive, and full of life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crystal went to Power Hills West Primary School, where she met her best friend Liz, and he still is her best friend forever and ever. I believe Wayne was there too, but you were a couple of years ahead, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, it, was, it was great to see Jackson, the dog, here too in the ceremony. Uh, boxers seem to run in our family. Um, Colleen, Colleen grew up with, with boxer dogs, and she's passed that on to, the, on to Crystal. Uh, I'm also pleased to have with that Crystal's a Crow supporter, so, so, so her... Um, her, her <laughs> Her, so her uh, mother didn't, didn't pass on her, uh, fer her feral attributes to her. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, we, we, uh, when, when Crystal was, was, was only five years old, we got her own boxer dog named Toby. And she loved him. Um, and she, you know, well, she loved all animals, don't she? Dogs and cats, but you like boxer dogs too. Our, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we remember once when Toby was sick after an operation, she snuck out of bed all night to check up on him. Eventually she ended up sleeping on the floor by him in the, in the, in the family room and we tried to drag her in bed and she kept on going back. So eventually we just let her, let her lie there with a pillow and, and a quilt to keep her going. It was lovely. So I suppose what I'm saying is, Wayne, I hope Crystal treats you just as well as Toby. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure she will. <laughs> now, Wayne, Wayne, when we, I first met you at my 60th birthday, only a year or so ago. And I know Crystal said to me, she said, now, Dad, now remember, as far as anyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. <laughs> That's a Simpsons quote for her. <laughs> but, uh, no... <laughs> I've noticed he's, he seems to be very calm and level-headed, level which I think you'll need to be. <laughs> Actually, at the time, at the time, both Crystal and I were doing Dry July, weren't we? we? And we did it very well too. That was right at the end of July. And so we were totally sober. Yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, Wayne, I look very. Like, I was very impressed when I met Wayne. He's a very good, smart man, self-employed go-getter. So I thought, no, he's a terrific bloke. So when he asked me for Crystal's, for, for Crystal's hand in marriage, I basically said it was about time. I was expecting it. <laughs> no receipts, no returns. No receipts, no returns. That's right. <laughs> yep. And, and, and here's some more advice from, I think, Homer Simpson. He said, yeah, you know, you know, Wayne, a nuclear reactor is a lot like a woman. You just have to read the manual and press the right buttons. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, anyway, so congratulations to Wayne, and, to Wayne and Crystal for a wonderful wedding and I have full confidence in their future happiness together. He's a bit serious now. Marriage is a partnership of equals, bringing together a two halves to make a whole, a new family. Crystal's leaving our family and, and starting her own, same as Wayne is leaving his family starting her own. To have, have a happy marriage, both of you have to put your own partner's need as, needs above your own. So don't be selfish pricks. You got to. You know, this is a thing. That's what I do. To me, this is to me this is best summed up by the famous song by Kurt Van Houten. Can I borrow a feeling? One <laughs> uh, one more one more quote I saw from a, a famous comedian called Phyllis Diller, who's probably no one's he's ever heard of. Probably uh, never go, never go to bed on an argument. Stay up and fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now in summary, Crystal, I am proud of you. Wayne, I am proud of you and I admire you. And I'm so happy that you've each found someone who treats you well. So, again, Wayne, I welcome to you to our family, you poor man. <laughs> so, can everyone charge their glasses and to the bride and groom? Oh! Beautiful, Raoul, well done. You're going to hand the microphone over to our second speaker now, and that is, of course, the maid of honour. So, Raoul, will head over to the... Um, that's the way. The front way is fine. I think she wants it at the table there, Raoul. 
Please put your hands together and welcome our second speaker. It's the maid of honor. Please welcome Liz. What is a wedding? Webster's Dictionary defines a wedding as the process of removing weeds from one's garden. I had to do it, I'm sorry. But seriously, how do you compact 25 years of friendship into a five minute speech? <laughs> I could ramble on about Crystal's fine qualities as a friend. Caring, passionate, loyal and fun. It goes without saying, she is a beautiful person, both inside and out. She has a kind heart, honest mouth <laughs> and wise mind. A laugh that could light up a room and great tits. <laughs> but everyone here already knows that, so. <laughs> what I would like to start with is how we became to be in each other's lives. Because it wasn't necessarily love at first sight, but it worked out better than I could ever have imagined. As a child, I was terrified of meeting new people. I was shy and awkward, and I would rather spend my lunch times alone than in an uncomfortable social situation. <laughs> I guess not much has really changed. <laughs> I had recently come to Parra Hills West Primary School from a school where the kids had literally stolen my lunch money. So I wasn't full of a lot of confidence. I did, however, manage to make friends with another particularly shy and quiet girl named Alexandria. While Crystal at the time was friends with a girl named Heidi. I guess we were aware of each other's existence, but we weren't quite each other's cup of tea. One fateful day at recess time, Alex and Heidi decided they didn't like Crystal and I anymore and ran off to play, leaving the two of us to begin the awkward introductions. What's your name? <laughs> Luckily, we got along with each other and soon enough, we were tight friends. We was like peas and carrots. <laughs> it goes without saying, we also developed a strong dislike for the girls who had abandoned us and cast us aside like burned shrinky dinks. <laughs> this would often result in a war of words, both on the playground and in the classroom. One week, Crystal and I were assigned lunch duty where we would deliver the class lunches from the canteen across the, across, across the quadrangle. I remember Crystal's delight when discovering one day Heidi had ordered a can of soft drink <laughs> with her lunch. Uh, obviously, the can was immediately grabbed and shaken to with an inch of its life. Both of us taking in turns when each other's arms got tired. <laughs> The entire walk across the quadrangle and up three flights of stairs to the classroom <laughs> to deliver the lunches to the waiting, hungry and unsuspecting children. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't get to see her open the can, but I don't remember ever doing lunch duty with Crystal again. <laughs> Crystal's boldness and daring always astonished and impressed me. Sometimes it scared me. She is confident in herself, free-spirited and spontaneous. She is the link to a side of me which otherwise would never have awoken. She keeps me wild. But she loves as hard as she rebels and she will give her each uh, she will give her all to each and every person whom she holds dear in her life. And each and every single one of us is here a better person for having known her. Crystal and Wayne have been in each other's lives for over a decade now. They have always shared an incredible connection, but behind the attraction lies a strong friendship bond. They say timing is everything, but it never really seems to be on our side, does it? <laughs> the first time Crystal and Wayne dated back in 2008, Crystal was leading the party life with yours truly. <laughs> and uh, Wayne didn't see her as someone that he could settle down with at the time. They gave it another shot. This time the roles were reversed and Wayne was loving the attention from other ladies at Stereosonic as he strolled around in his stringlet. 
<laughs> not shirtless, okay? So alas, it was not meant to be. <laughs> Over the years, they stayed in contact, watching wistfully on Facebook as they fill each uh, in and out of new relationships, never managing to be single and emotionally ready at the time. Then one night in April 2018, Wayne finally mustered up the courage to kiss Crystal and the rest is history. It became Facebook official in August and on Boxing Day of the same year, Wayne knew he couldn't bear a life without Crystal and popped the question with a giant inflatable ring. <laughs> Wayne, you're the man of Crystal's dreams. I've never seen the stars in her eyes shine so bright than when she looks at you. But remember, choose to love each other even in those moments when you struggle to like each other. Realise that a strong marriage really has two strong people at the same time and that a marriage is never 50-50, it's 100-100. It's not about splitting things in half but about each person giving everything they've got. They say that you don't marry the person you can live with, you marry the person you can't live without. And this sums up Crystal and Wayne perfectly. <laughs> This is where I was going to make a toast, but then I was taught I couldn't do it, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join in me in raising a glass to the lovely couple, to a long life filled with happiness, adventure, and wonderful memories, to Crystal and Wayne Blackburn. Beautiful, Liz. Let's hear it for Liz. Well done. As we pass over to our final speaker, keep that round of applause going because it's the best man, it's Dave. Okay, so I don't know how I can compete against that. That's, um, that was pretty impressive, I've got to say. Um, I've, I'm a bit unprepared. I thought Paul was actually going to do the speech. He backed out, so that's all right, I got the job. Anyway, um, I've known Wayne for about 20 years now and uh, we go back to trade school days, so we go, we go back a while. We've had a few beers and a few good times in between. So I've got to be honest, um, I never thought Wayne would be the type to settle down. He was a, he was a male slut, really. <laughs> let's, let's face it. So... One day he said he met this lady, Crystal, and I thought, wow. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is another woman. I'm, I'm not going to get attached to the name. Because she'll probably come and go. So here we are. Here we are two years later, and they're getting married. So you must be doing something right. I'll tell you what. So that's um, commendable. And... Uh, yeah, so I wish you all the best and I uh, hope you have a long and fulfilled life together and uh, being a parent myself, it's uh, a blessing. So I hope you both get to have a child and many children. And yeah. So everyone, just uh, I'd like you to raise a glass and uh, pose a toast to Wayne and Crystal Blackburn. Beautiful and well done, Dave. Let's give all our speakers a round of applause, please. And we'll turn the microphone off. That's the one. Because we're going to invite the bride to the dance floor now as we have the father and the daughter dance. So we're going to ask Raoul and his daughter Crystal to move to the floor. He's got in his dancing shoes already. Look at him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Crystal and her father, Raoul. For all those times you stood by me, for all the truth that you may see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all the wrong that you made right.
swagger, they calling me Mick Jagger I be rolling like a stone jet, set a jet lagger We ain't messing with no maggots, messing with the baddest Chicks in the club, honey what's up? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the baddest of them all? Yeah it's gotta be the apple, I'm the Mac Daddy y'all, haters better step back Ladies don't load you up I'm the party application rocking just like that this is International Big Mega Radio Smasher. Cause I'm having a good time with you. I'm telling you. I, 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 I. 